Hey everybody, it's Corey. Thanks for joining me on the North Idaho Market Tracker. We're going to track the housing numbers from last week in the North Idaho market in just a minute. I wanted to bring up a, an interesting piece of information in this episode, specifically as it relates to the work from home economy. I get a lot of questions and you see a lot of attention being given on social media, YouTube, and so forth about the work from home economy and the tech industry and the layoffs that are happening. And we're seeing a couple things happen. We're seeing the tech industry start to cut back on their employees and layoffs are happening. We're starting to see work from home employees getting ordered back into the office. And those things are being used by some personalities to suggest that this is one of the big triggers that's going to launch the housing collapse. And I think it's important to understand and quantify what the work from home economy is. So the best stat that I found was in the Wall Street Journal last week. And I'll read it to you. It says here that fully remote workers make up about 13% of working Americans or about 25 million individuals, according to Stanford University economist Nicholas Bloom. The large majority of them are call center employees or do work such as data entry or information technology support. In other words, they aren't work from anywhere jet setters with high salaries. And it goes on to say somewhere with cheap housing, low crime, and good schools within the U.S. will be a huge magnet for these folks. Because if you're making $74,000 a year, you can have a great family lifestyle, which is maybe harder to do in New York or San Francisco on that salary. Work from homers make up 13% of the actual economy. If they're owning a home, they're, they're a small percentage of homeowners. The tech industry, the work from home worker, that whole ecosystem that kind of revolves around tech, I think you're going to see... The larger tech markets, New York, Seattle, San Francisco, Austin, Texas, those places are going to take the hit as the tech industry lays people off and orders people to come back into work. But it's important to understand where those people are going to go. If they lose their jobs, if they can decide on where they're going to work on a $74,000 salary, for example, this article suggests they're going to go to more affordable markets. And that is certainly what's happening in the real estate sphere right now is people are going to the more affordable markets. And we're starting to see those more affordable markets in the Midwest, some of the cheaper areas in the Sun Belt gain from people moving due to affordability. I wanted to bring that stat out so that you have a, a quantifiable perspective on what the work from home economy impact would be on real estate. Again, the larger tech markets, they're probably going to take a bigger hit than some of your rural, more affordable markets. Certainly, all the different darts that are aimed at the housing market can have its impact. But to suggest that the work-from-home economy is going to collapse a housing market is simply not true, especially when they're only 13% of the actual economy in the first place. All right, thought you might like that. I found it interesting. Let's get into the housing stats for North Idaho last week. All right, taking a look at the mortgage rates from last week. You can see here, according to Freddie Mac, the 30-year fixed rate mortgage came in at 6.12. That is a one-week change of going up 0.03%. Looking at the market totals, last week, you can see listings were 100. Comparing that to the week prior, the new homes coming onto the market are down by 17. So we're not seeing an increase of inventory come back onto the market just yet. Total homes for sale, 1,121. That's down um, from last week. And again, we're eating into the inventory. And the reason for that is the next category, pending sales. There were 104 pending sales last week. The week prior, there were only 76. And again, that's a steadily increasing uh, number for pending sales. And that's expected in the, in the time that we're in. We're going back into the spring buying season but for the market to, to see pending sales increase uh, like this is encouraging. Um, it doesn't um, translate into a market collapse when uh, houses are not coming onto the market and people are increasing their purchasing um, activity. Uh, closed sales for the last week were 40, and that was down from the week prior, 49. And remember, these are lagging indicators. They're about 30 days behind. I fully expect the closed sales for um, 30 days from now to go up based on the pending activity that we're seeing. And it'll be fun to watch these pending sales to see how many of them actually fall out of contract and translate into closed sales or not. 
Here's an interesting uh, number for you. The median price of the homes sold last week was 40, 448500 and that was down quite a bit from the week prior. So the week prior, people just bought more expensive homes. Um, last week, people tended to want to stay under that $500,000 price point, and that's what we're seeing. If anything's under five hundred, dollars uh, people are gobbling, gobbling them up. All right, and then compare our last week's uh, numbers to the same week last year. New listings, pretty much the same. We had 7% fewer listings this year than last year. Nothing too drastic there. The total for sale last year, there were only 504 homes on the market. And again, this the same week this year was 1,121. So over 100%, 122% more homes on the market now than the same time last year. Uh, pending sales, right about the same, if not better. We had 92 last year at this time, and we had 104 this year, and that was a 13% increase. So again, the buyer activity is stronger this year than it was last year. Closed sales, again, we're still down about 50%. Last year, there were 76 closed sales for that week in February, and then last week, there was 40. So again, a 47% drop in homes for sale. So actual sales are down. And then median price last year was 488500 Compared to this last week, this year, um, it's an 8% drop. It is interesting to watch from week to week what the numbers are doing, especially for pending sales and, and listings. There's not a lot of homes coming on the market. We're eating into the inventory, and the pending sales are actually stronger this year versus last year. We'll be keeping an eye on that. As a breakdown of the purchase methods for last week, we had a total of 40 sales. 19 of those were conventional loans. 14 of those were cash buyers. Again, that's 35%. And remember, I'm always reminding you the national average is right around 25%. So we have more cash buyers in our market than the national average. We had three FHA loans, two VA loans, and two other. And so there you have it. Those are your breakdowns of purchase methods. And that is your stats for last week. Until next week, you guys take care. Bye now.